Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will guide you on how to build a power supply circuit with an output power of up to 350 watt. This power capacity depends on the type of transformer used. More importantly, we can repurpose transformers from old computer power supplies without having to rewind them. One of the common challenges when building a power supply circuit is winding transformers. However, with my design, you don't need to do that. In this circuit, I use an isolated transformer gate driver transformer controlled by the SG35 to 5 IC. The output voltage can be fixed according to your needs, such as 48 volt, 12 volt, or 5 volt. These are common voltage levels that can be extracted from the transformer of an old computer power supply without rewinding. The output current can reach approximately 35A. However, this value depends on the transformer's power capacity. Now, I will test the overload protection feature by short-circuiting the output. Currently, the output voltage is 12.6 volts. When I use a copper wire to short the output, the voltage immediately drops to 0 volts, indicating that the power supply has activated its protection mode. At this moment, the power indicator LED also turns off. To restart the power supply, the only way is to disconnect and then reconnect the power source. After I unplug and replug the power, the output voltage returns to 12.6 volts. I have many old computer power supplies, some of which no longer function due to damaged components. However, many components can still be salvaged to build a power supply as needed, such as inductors, main transformers, or heat sinks. Although there are various types of computer power supplies, this design allows you to use most transformers from old computer power supplies. If you are interested, I will provide detailed instructions in upcoming videos after an introduction to my partner, JLCPCB. JLCPCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering electronics engineers to develop projects efficiently. With 19 years of PCB manufacturing expertise since 2006, running five cutting-edge, in-house factories and serving over 5.48 million engineers in 180 countries and regions. Order PCBS from JLCPCB effortlessly. Upload your Gerber file to get instant quote and order in minutes. It's as easy as online shopping. PCB customization, component sourcing, stencil manufacturing, and high-precision assembly all in one place. Get 1 to 8 layer PCBS for just $2, efficient large-scale production reducing costs and bringing you unbeatable prices. Quality and lead time is reliable. All in-house production, ensuring quality stability and strict quality control in every process. Rapid turnaround, lightning fast PCB production in just 24 hours. Don't miss JLCPCB 6-layer PCB special. Get $30 off with a coupon and enjoy top quality 6-layer PCBS for just $5. Plus, to you enig finish and no engineering fees for via and pad. The control circuit combined with a gate driver transformer to control MOSFET with power supplied by a ferrite transformer, repurposed from an old computer power supply. The transformer's secondary is left open-ended to allow flexible output voltage selection. 5V, 12V, 24V, 48V by connecting appropriate rectifier diodes. Here are the results after uploading my Gerber files to JLCPCB's official website one week ago. The PCB turned out beautifully. I've shared the project's Gerber files in the description section. Feel free to download them. This is the input power section with a 3A protection fuse, noise filtering capacitors, and 450 volts power supply capacitors. Another section is voltage reduction circuit that converts 220 volt down to 13 volt to power the board's operation. We need to verify voltages at these two sections before assembling additional components. The power capacitor should measure approximately 310 volts while the output of the 220 volts to 13 volt step-down circuit must reach about 13 volts. 
This is the area for installing the gate driver transformer. I'm using a ferrite core with the dimensions shown in the video. For the windings, I'm repurposing Ethernet cables, wrapping three strands simultaneously around the core for 30 turns each. And here's the finished gate driver transformer after winding with repurposed Ethernet cable. After soldering the gate driver transformer and control circuit components, I'll apply 12 volts power and use an oscilloscope to analyze the waveform at the MOSFET gate G pin. This is the gate drive waveform observed at the MOSFET G terminal. While slightly distorted, it remains with unacceptable parameters. The circuit's operating frequency measures 51 kHz. These are the gate waveforms for both MOSFETs. As you can see, the two signals are perfectly complementary. Only one MOSFET conducts at any given time. Next, I'll solder all remaining components. For the output capacitors, select low ESR types to ensure optimal performance. The filter inductor is rewound using a recycled computer PSU core with an inductance of 10H. The output diode must be rated for at least 30A. The transformer used here is salvaged from old computer power supplies. Most standard PSU transformers are compatible with this circuit. For maximum output current, select higher power rated units. After assembling all components, I'll connect a 1N4148 diode in series with the multimeter probe to measure the output voltages. Without this diode, the multimeter won't read accurately due to the circuit's high frequency operation. The transformer's output voltage varies significantly and can exceed 40 volts. I've connected the diode to the 18 volts tap as my target output is a stable 13 volts. Thank you for watching. If you found this guide helpful, please like and share the video to support the channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more DIY electronics projects. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos.